kind of the dynamic nature of interpretation on this, like as different people were looking at these texts and even like the boldness and radical ideas of, of Calvin just going against August Augustine, right? Like yeah. the dynamic nature of that is very fascinating. Yeah. And and I think the goal, like you're saying, is like, how do we get to like the so like as close to the source as possible? Yeah. Because if we can get to the source, like authorial intent, like what was actually meant and how it was perceived and understood by the churches, that's as close as we could possibly understand what Paul really meant. Because the trouble that I get into, too, is like when we have our own kind of theological framework and whatever tradition we're part of, that kind of paints the picture and how I'm now reading that text versus like when you read the Bible critically, you're really trying to get to what was Paul actually saying here? Let me try to let me try to put this theological framework aside and just really look at that particular, you know, what was being said by Paul. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so so for me, you know, I've. You'll, you'll find in this book, I've, I've done a lot of work in, uh, or not, not a lot of work. I, ha- I haven't done a lot of work. I've, uh, I've, I've built a lot on the work of, of Marcus Bachmiel, who is, uh, he's, he's the, the chair of scripture over, over in Oxford. And, um, he, he does really, really good work in, um, you know, some, some of his books. Uh, so seeing the word is one of them, probably the, the easiest, you know, introduction, uh, to the kind of methodologically, the kinds of stuff that he does. He's done a lot of really good work in in showing how you can use early tradition as a historical guide and as a witness to the historical realities that are you know that that, that the texts go and uh, you know give witness to, and so um, looking at memory studies and things like that and just showing when you when you're looking at early interpretation when you're looking at early early reception if we're talking you know in in Augustine's time you know centuries later. Uh, you know, can he go and talk to somebody and say, hey, you knew Paul. Can you tell me what Paul meant here? Not not as easily. Uh, you, it's uh, that that probably isn't going to be be the, be the case unless you sort of have uh, people around who are kind of living to sort of Old Testament lifespans. Um, there's that probably it's going to be hard to find folks that, that are like that. If you're looking, though, within the first 150 years after Paul, what what Marcus does a good job of showing is. You have a couple of generations ties that are there um, to the apostolic figures where the the interpretation that you find from them is not is not strictly textual. It's also informed by living memory of the people and the places and the events that were associated with them. And so the example that he goes and uses is Irenaeus. So Irenaeus, who he's writing at the end of the second century, um, you know, against heresies is usually dated around 180 A.D., um, but he was a disciple of, you know, Polycarp, who was himself a disciple of John. And so you have this tie that's there where he, you know, he, you know, growing up, his memories are hearing all this stuff that Polycarp knew about John and everything that John said and did. And, you know, everything that he told him about the apostles and all the stuff that the apostles did. So you, so you, you can go and talk to somebody who actually knew the apostles there. And so within that, that particular uh, you know, that, that you could say that the, the more or less century and a half after, uh, you know, after the, you know, the, the, the apostles themselves, uh, there is a, there's a privileged period there from a historical standpoint where what you're looking at is not just going to be, you know, hey, I opened a book and this is just what happened to, to occur to me. That doesn't mean that that's not valuable because, even there, they might go and share sort of cultural, you know, kind of, uh, you could say norms and things like that, that we, that might be, we might not have in the same kind of way. And so, you know, it, you know, Tertullian opening a book at the beginning of the third century, even if he doesn't necessarily have, you know, kind of, you know, apostolic living memory in the same kind of way, he might still share in some of the kind of unspoken assumptions that we culturally are more removed from. But if you look particularly in that early period, in that first 150 years, interpretation is going to be shaped by real memory. And so uh, he, kind of all of the details of that, he does a fantastic job in going spelling out. And so that's what I try to go. And uh, you, basically, I take that, that methodology and say, well, let's apply that to this question of worse of the law. Because, yet, you know, the hope is, you know, we want to we want to get back at what Paul, you know, said originally, kind of what his original meaning is. And then also hopefully provide um, provide a ground for 
the kind of the back and forth between uh, you know the, the old and new perspectives provide provide ground to actually have a you know real constructive discussion because so so many of these debates back and forth which can you know in some contexts have gotten quite quite vitriolic uh, there's just they just they just end up talking past each other uh, there's no real common ground that's there so that's you know that's that's what I've I've tried to do with this book is to look at early you know Pauline interpretation and say hey here is here's everybody who was closest to Paul, you know, who we have, uh, you know, who seem to do, you know, be interpreting passages like this. What can they tell us? And can they go and give us some some common ground? Now, somebody could still go and reject all of that and say, no, Paul, Paul meant one thing. Nobody else knew what he meant until I came around. And now I'm going to go and tell you exactly what he meant. And in fairness, you can find certain new perspective interpreters who sometimes come across that way. So that is a that's a bit of, of a bit of a bit of a hubris that uh, you know whether old or new perspective. I mean, sometimes it feels like maybe the new perspective folks, at least some of them, can come come across that way at times. Um, but if you if you're gonna if you're not gonna go that route, if you're not gonna just say, "Hey guys, don't, read Paul, sure," and then I will be his, you know. I'll be his interpreter, and that's all you really need to know. If you if you want to do something more constructive than than that, I I think that you know the the early reception that that we have is is really valuable. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video clip from the Dogato podcast. To get more videos like this, simply subscribe here on YouTube. You can also download the full episode of each show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or your favorite podcast player. Take care.